Uh, Ms. Secretary, can you tell us what the department is doing to shore up election security from Russian cyber interference? Uh, give confidence to the committee and the American people that uh, that we've got this and the, we are ready to uh, protect and defend our, our electoral process. Congressman, thank you very much. This is one of our priority areas. And as a matter of fact, just a few weeks ago, uh, I engaged with secretaries of state from all over the country uh, to focus our efforts on election security. Uh, we are building upon uh, the great work of the former CISA director, Chris Krebs. Uh, Jen Easter Lee is leading, of course, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security a Agency in this effort. Uh, we have just established a Mis- and Disinformation Governance Board in the Department of Homeland Security to more effectively um, combat uh, this threat, not only to election security, uh, but to our homeland security. We are disseminating information uh, to the secretaries of state. We are counseling them and providing resources to ensure uh, better physical security. We are uh, addressing all aspects of election security, um, given, of course, the midterm elections that are upon us and the fundamental uh, integrity of our democratic processes that is at stake. Be able to testify. Obviously, there are a lot of folks that have talked to you both today and before about this disinformation governing board. Uh, there's some obvious questions and been some problems with the rollout on this. Uh, I'm gonna, not going to go into a lot of details to tell you, but I will tell you I have some major concerns, obviously, and part of our concerns is just a lack of information. So I just want to be able to bounce through a couple things. Before I jump into that, I do want to say this as well. Uh, last year in our budget hearing, uh, which was in July last year, I asked you some different questions for the record. Your team actually sent me the answers for those questions for the record three hours ago. So I'm going to give you a couple things uh, because it may take eight months to be able to get the answer back on it. And by the way, some of those were yes or no questions on it as well. Uh, so I do appreciate the answer on it very much, but let me give you just a couple of things. Is there a written mission statement, a strategy document, a principles, a charter, a job description on this disinformation governing board? Are there written documents to explain what it is and what it is not, what they're doing? If I can preface my answer with an apology. Thank you. Uh, uh, both to you, uh, to Ranking Member Portman, and to this committee with respect to um, responses to uh, requests for the record. Uh, we need to be um, uh, swifter in providing this committee with responses, and I extend that apology to the entire uh, committee. Um, there is a charter. Uh, you are correct, Senator, uh, that uh, the, the rollout with respect uh, to this uh, working group uh, was suboptimal and we need to provide more information not only to this committee in Congress, but to the American uh, public. There is a charter and uh, principles are being developed. And what, we, what this working group seeks to do is actually develop guidelines, standards, um, guardrails uh, to ensure that the work that has been ongoing for nearly 10 years does not infringe on people's free speech rights rights of privacy, civil rights, and civil liberties. It was, a, it was quite disconcerting, frankly, that the disinformation work that was well underway for many years across different administrations was not guided uh, uh, by guardrails. So let me, let me say this then. We will want those written documents, all those principles, as soon as we possibly can, job descriptions and the task on this, because it's left undefined. We have no idea what this is. So we want to be able to get that. Uh, you've also said that they're, uh, you, they'll have guardrails, or already have guardrails in this. Can I have a copy of that, and when can I get that? No, no, we, the, 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 one of the primary goals of this working group is actually to develop those okay. guardrails so, so, to protect the rights. Got it. So it needs to be – here's, here's my challenge initially on this. Obviously, it's completely undefined. It's just sitting out there. The FBI already does this. The State Department already does this. So the State Department identifies already foreign disinformation that's coming into us. The FBI is already looking for disinformation that could lead to terrorism, harm, all these kind of things. We're trying to figure out this DHS new invention on what it does. And, and here's our problem. Let me show you this. This is not going to shock you on this. The leader that you appointed to be able to put into this task, when we just do a simple question to say, who is this person on it, what we get back is, political statements that she's made, for instance, on the Steele dossier, which we all know was disinformation. That was a Clinton campaign document uh, that was very engaged with the Russians on it. 
she actually, when it comes up, she's going to Chris Steele and saying, I listened to this last night, Chris Steele, yes, that Chris Steele, provides some great historical context about the evolution of disinformation, worth a listen. Or when people made a comment publicly about Chris Steele, she responded back on Twitter, April 22nd of 2020, you're aware that the Steele dossier is a Republican opposition research project. Okay, that's clearly disinformation on this. She's also made the public statements, uh, October the 14th, let me switch this over, October the 14th, 2020, in an AP article, she's quoted saying the Hunter Biden laptop, we view it as a Trump campaign product, and then said the emails don't need to be altered to be part of an influence campaign. So voter des voters deserve the context, not a fairy tale about a laptop repair shop. So we have a, a practical question here. We don't have a definition of what it is. We don't have boundaries of what it does. The FBI already does this. The State Department already does this. And the person you tap to lead the disinformation campaign has been outspoken on TikTok and Twitter with disinformation, specifically on election issues. So we're responding to something that's unknown, and what we do know is disinformation coming from it. Why should we not have suspicions on this? Can I, um, um, I'll say two things. Number one, Senator, you mentioned that the Department of State and the Federal Bureau of Investigation already do this work. So does the Department of Homeland Security. The Department of Homeland Security has been doing this work for years in addressing disinformation that poses a threat to the security of our homeland, whether it's Russia uh, in the cyber domain, whether it's um, disinformation with respect to the resources that FEMA provides to the most vulnerable people in the wake of a natural disaster, whether it's addressing the smuggling organizations and their disinformation, not to U.S. persons, uh, but to vulnerable migrants who receive disinformation and are goaded into um, coming uh, to, the, to the border under false pretenses. That work has been underway for years and years. What this group is to do is to ensure that that work is performed in a way consistent with the law. It does not infringe on freedom of speech, rights of privacy, civil rights, and civil liberties. It is going to establish what should have been established years ago standards, definitions, guidelines, and policies. Well, General lady from Colorado is recognized for three minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise to oppose the previous question so that we could immediately consider H.R. 7690. Madam Speaker, the Biden regime wants to talk disinformation. Okay, let's give them something to talk about. Let's talk about how the White House said that it was Republicans that want to defund the police. Let's talk about how Secretary Mayorkas said the southern border is closed. Let's talk about how Joe Biden said his Build Back Better agenda cost zero American tax dollars. Let's talk about how Biden's new press secretary falsely claimed Trump stole the 2016 presidential election. And remember Afghanistan? Let's talk about how Joe Biden said any American who wants to come home will get you home. Well, that sounds like the words of a lying dog-faced pony soldier to me. The American people will not have their speech monitored by corrupt career professional politicians who lie day in and day out. And now the DHS a militarized department has established a new disinformation governance board, or more accurately known as the Department of Propaganda. DHS was created to stop terrorism. Now it's being used to terrorize the American people. And who did Mayorkas hire to run this Orwellian Ministry of Truth? This lady, Nina Jankowitz. Mayorkas calls her an expert on disinformation, probably because she tells lies all the dang time. Nina said that President Trump would embolden ISIS. Well, he defeated it. Nina said the Hunter Biden laptop from hell was a Trump campaign product. Nina said that concerned parents who wanted a say in their children's education were pushing disinformation. And Nina, said big tech should censor the Wuhan lab leak theory because it was 
you guessed it, disinformation. Nina doesn't seem to have a good relationship with truth and will surely use this board to silence Americans. Nina is no public servants. How's that you say? Don't take it from me. Here's her words. Are these the words of a public servant? What do I need to do to, well, Madam Speaker, I'll let you read the rest of that. This doesn't sound like someone who should be monitoring Americans' speech. The Democrat Party has truly lost their minds. From intimidating judges at their homes, burning down pregnancy centers, and vandalizing churches, to calling moms and dads domestic terrorists, and now creating this department to censor free speech because extremists are scared has of what? Expired. Elon Musk? They Gentle think social time media censor expired. doesn't go far enough, and this needs to be defunded. Well, no longer recognize the gentleman from Maryland. Here. Let's, gentleman. let's keep talking about this disinformation board, if we could. The fact sheet from DHS on the disinformation board that you recently released defined disinformation disinformation this way, false information spread with the intent to deceive or mislead. You agree with that, I assume? That's your definition? Yes, I believe that's the definition. Um, On the fact sheet. Broadly and broadly um, okay. uh, held. And, and uh, you think it's important that the U.S. government combat this dis disinformation, right? I mean, you've testified to that. Senator, I, uh, what I testified to is when disinformation um, threatens national security. Threat to the security of our homeland, then we are engaged. Okay, all right, good. And I, I presume that's why you've set up this disinformation board. So let, let's have a look at the person whom you've selected to head this new disinformation policing effort. And let's look at what she has been spreading online. She has, for starters, consistently misinformed the public about the Hunter Biden laptop story and spread the lie that it was Russian propaganda. Here she is on October the 14th saying, disinformation experts say there are multiple red flags that raise doubts about their authenticity, meaning the emails, including questions about whether the laptop actually belongs to Hunter Biden. Of course, as it turns out, that's totally false. This laptop has been authenticated both by government entities and by independent news organizations. She went on. Here she is again, the same interview, saying that we should view it, meaning the laptop and apparently the whole story, as a Trump campaign product. That is also a lie, which you know. You know it's not a Trump campaign product. It never was a Trump campaign product. But she didn't stop there. Here she is on October the 22nd uh, on, in 2020, this time taking to social media, saying that Biden notes 50 former NATSEC officials and five former CIA heads that believe the laptop is a Russian influence op. Laundering here, using government, former government officials to launder the lie that this was in fact a Russian influence op, which of course is not true at all. Here she is also on October the 22nd, still on social media, this time saying, the emails don't need to be altered to be part of an influence campaign. Of course, they weren't altered. Voters deserve that context, not a fairy tale about a laptop repair shop. Of course, we know the only person in all of this telling a fairy tale is Ms. Jankowitz on social media repeatedly for days and days on end. How about a different set of examples? She has consistently spread false and misleading claims about the Steele dossier, which we now know was actually itself a piece of Russian propaganda. Here she is on December the 8th, 2017, responding, by the way, to United States Senator. She's responding to Lindsey Graham. She says to him, your party funded the dossier first. The FBI was investigating Trump since the summer, but didn't make it public. The American public deserved to know. This is false. The people who funded the dossier were the Clinton campaign, which we now know. This has been verified. This is outright falsehoods. But she didn't stop there. Here she is on August the 7th, 2020, promoting Christopher Steele, the stooge who helped launder Russian propaganda, including lying to the FBI about it. Here she is lauding him as a trustworthy and legitimate source. Classic disinformation. She says she listened to this last night, Chris Steele, yes, that Chris Steele, providing great historical context about the evolution of disinformation. 
At every turn, Mr. Secretary, she has used social media and the public to launder propaganda herself. She's also advocated for law enforcement to be involved in policing speech online. Here she is in an NPR interview this year, just a few weeks ago, April 16th, 2022. This is Ms. Jankowitz, and I quote, I shudder to think about if free speech absolutists were taking over more platforms. We need platforms to do more, and we frankly need law enforcement and our legislatures to do more as well. And then she goes on to praise legislation in other countries that involves policing speech. Or here she is on February 17th of 2021 saying that the free speech versus censorship dichotomy is false and calling herself in a TikTok video the Mary Poppins of disinformation where she sings that members of Congress shouldn't be permitted to spread misinformation on the floor and otherwise taking to task those who propagate views she disagrees with. Just by saying them in Congress or a mainstream outlet, so disinformation's origins are slightly less atrocious. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. When Rudy Giuliani shared that intel from Ukraine, or when TikTok. And Here's my question to you: If your intent was to combat misinformation online or in the government, why on God's green earth would you nominate someone who is a human geyser of misinformation? Um, Senator, um, I, I am ultimately responsible for the hiring of Ms. Jankowitz uh, to be the executive director of the Disinformation Governance Board. In my capacity as the secretary, Why did you I, choose I, bear, her? I bear responsibility uh, for that. Um, I understand that she is uh, an expert in disinformation. Yes, indeed, will, spreading it. And she will have an obligation to execute her responsibilities in a nonpartisan way. Were you aware of these, were you aware of this information when you chose her, everything I, I've just shown you? I was not. Why, how could you not be? Uh, uh, Did you do any research on her? Senator, Senator, uh, I will not uh, discuss the internal workings of the hiring process. You won't? Of the Department of Homeland Security. Well, let me ask you about this. I, I'm sure there are documents pertaining to this board, minutes of meetings, communications about who would serve on the board. Will you release those to this committee? Um, uh, Senator, there are not uh, yet this this governance board. Wait a minute. There are no me there are no minutes of meetings about this board. It is not yet. You've not uh, created any records. It has not yet begun its work. Y you've hired her. You surely had deliberations about hiring her. The, the the board has not yet met. You you had deliberations about hiring her though, correct? Uh, I did not, uh, Senator. You just said I, that you are solely responsible for hiring her. In my capacity as the secretary. I bear responsibility. You're telling me that there are no documents on. associated with this board? I, that, I, that I don't know. You asked for meeting minutes. minutes. of meetings, documents pertaining to the board, any records of communications about who would serve on the board. Will you turn those over to this committee? Any document uh, pertaining to this board, will you turn it over to this committee? Senator, we, we owe you documents with respect to the work of this board that already are in existence. So you'll turn them all over? You will turn those documents over to this, to this committee? Unless there is a legal basis for us not to do so. Uh, Senator, I will follow up with my uh, colleagues on that. Did you, did you, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You started to say yes, but, th but then you just, you no, just, no, turned, is that a yes or is that a, that's a maybe, I'll get back to you later. Um, Senator, I owe openness and transparency with this committee and we will produce the documents that you have requested unless there's a legal prohibition from uh, us doing so. Thank you, thank, thank you. Here, here, if I could just conclude, Mr. Chairman, here, here's, here's the last thing I'll say on this, Mr. Secretary. We have two million unauthorized migrants who crossed the border last year during the calendar year. We have 245,390 illegal crossings just this year in the Rio Grande Valley. And your priority is setting up a board and hiring someone who has gone to TikTok to talk about stopping speech she doesn't like, who has mocked voters, supporters of the last president, that has been your priority. To say that your priorities are misplaced, I think is a dramatic understatement. And the time has come, I think, Mr. Secretary, for you to resign. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.